T.S. Spivet is a 10-year-old genius living on a secluded rural Montana ranch with his moody older sister, his entomologist mother, and his emotionally distant and quiet cowboy father. Despite the primitive standards of his house, T.S. has become an avid enthusiast of science. Whenever free, he often reads books and tries inventing new things. We also learn that T.S. had a twin brother, Layton, who died recently in a shooting accident, for which T.S. blames himself. The tragedy unfolded when he and his brother were out playing in an old barn on the property. T.S. reveals that his cowboy father was far closer to the extrovert Layton because the two were similar in many ways. Now, after the death of his son, the cowboy has difficulty leaving his room or connecting with T.S.'s scientifically inclined studies. His mother, a PhD scholar, has begun studying insects obsessively. She also collects various specimens to cope with the loss of her child. On the other hand, his sister Gracie is always consumed with thoughts of beauty pageants and acting. T.S. is often ignored and belittled by the people around him. Even at school, he is criticized by his teacher, who sees his intelligence and innovative thinking as evidence of arrogance. So, T.S. spends most of his time playing alone, making amateur inventions, and walking around the ranch with the family dog. One day, he and Gracie are working with corn kernels on their porch. Suddenly, their phone rings, and T.S.'s mother picks up the call. She is shocked to hear that someone is looking for her son. Soon, T.S. picks up the call and learns that it is from the renowned museum, the Smithsonian Institution. It turns out that he has won a prestigious prize for his blueprint of a magnetically run perpetual motion wheel. Now, T.S. is invited to attend the awards ceremony in Washington, D.C. However, the museum director, Miss Gibson, who is on the call, believes that T.S. is actually a grown man and that the little boy talking to her is the son of the prize winner. Initially, T.S. is reluctant, as he simply can't get out of his house. His cowboy father would never let his family step outside the state of Montana, let alone travel to D.C. However, since it is the best shot to achieve something in his career, T.S. plans to risk it all. Finally, he decides to run away from home to receive the prize. Before leaving, he packs a suitcase and takes one last look at Layton's old bedroom. There's a pile of dusty toys and furniture that his parents are unable to bring themselves to throw away. T.S. tearfully closes the door, as he still blames himself for his twin brother's death. He then passes by his sister and father before leaving. However, both of them are too wrapped up in their daily routines to even notice him. This slightly upsets T.S. as he thinks to himself, no one will notice me, even when I'm gone. Shortly after, the little boy drags his large suitcase and heads to the train station. Being an organized person, he has brought along all his essentials, like binoculars, compass, winter clothes, and so on. However, at the train station, T.S. realizes that he is a bit early. So, to speed things up, he climbs up a traffic sign and puts the stop signal on. The plan works, and just after a few minutes, a train shows up. T.S. excitedly boards it with his big suitcase, but unfortunately, a couple of authorities notice him. Realizing that he doesn't have a ticket, they begin chasing him mercilessly. But our little genius manages to climb up a tower and successfully makes it to the train below. Soon, the vehicle begins moving, and T.S. finally evades the authorities. Not only is he a scientist, he's also a chef. He knows how to smoke bacon. On the way, he makes himself comfortable in one of the rail cars, where he plays and imagines that Layton is still there with him. This shows how much he misses his late brother. Next, the train makes a stop at Wyoming, and the guards at the station begin to examine the vehicle. Realizing this, T.S. hides in an auction show camper vehicle that's being transported. However, the guard is suspicious, so he decides to check the camper vehicle. Inside, we see that there's a life-sized cardboard stencil of a family eating dinner. T.S. pretends to be one of the cardboards, so the guard looking in thinks he's just part of the art. After the narrow escape, T.S. realizes that he needs to be careful, so he opts to sleep inside the camper. However, when the train comes to a halt, he decides to head out in search of food. T.S. soon meets a drifter named Two Clouds, and the duo starts chatting. In the next scene, Two Clouds invites the boy into his trailer and tells him an inspirational story of how a bird reached its destination despite facing many ups and downs. The old man then provides T.S. with some change so that he can buy some food for himself. Next, T.S. goes to a nearby takeaway shop and orders hot dogs. This is the first time he is going to eat fast food in his whole life. It turns Turns out, his cowboy father is so religious that he never allowed any food products that didn't come from their farm. This makes the hot dog even more special for T.S., probably more disgusting too. But right then, two police officers arrive at the scene and ask the shop owner if she has seen a missing boy. They then bring out a poster, and shockingly, the boy is revealed to be none other than T.S. himself. However, the cops are so occupied with their conversation that they fail to notice the 
little boy right next to them. After they are gone, T.S. nervously talks to the shop owner and explains that his parents are dead and that he lives alone. To his luck, she doesn't say a word and simply lets him leave. That's nice for T.S.'s sake, but that lady should probably go to jail. While heading back to the train, T.S. contemplates using a nearby payphone to call his family, but he can't bring himself to do it. The next day, he walks along the railroad tracks with his backpack, having stored his suitcase in a nearby electrical grid box. At the same time, a mean-spirited policeman pulls up behind him, asking him about his whereabouts. T.S. lies once again, saying that he is from Chernobyl, and also begins to converse in a foreign language. Unfortunately, the policeman catches wind of his deceit and begins chasing him. The two go back and forth for a while, and at one point, T.S. is almost cornered. So, he is forced to climb atop a separating bridge, where a boat is passing through. Unfortunately, the move turns out to be a dangerous one, and T.S. is left hanging from the bridge. This frightens the cop, and he frantically apologizes to the little boy for chasing him. He even provides instructions on how to climb back up. Thankfully, T.S., being an intelligent boy, uses the laws of physics to his advantage and eventually reaches safety. However, during the struggle, he injures his ribs, causing him immense pain. To make matters worse, his compass and favorite sparrow skeleton that he brought along are also destroyed. Heartbroken, T.S. throws both of his belongings into the river. He then heads to the highway and attempts to hitchhike a ride. Almost every vehicle ignores him, but a friendly trucker named Rick stops and pulls him up. It turns out, Rick usually offers rides to people, which becomes evident when he showcases his collection of photographs with them. There's a red flag if I've ever seen one. Later, as the two are talking, Rick realizes that the young boy is badly injured near the chest, so he advises T.S. to visit a doctor soon, but the latter says he is fine. T.S. is still scared that he will be discovered by the authorities and sent back to his family ranch in Montana. After Rick drops him off in Washington, T.S. finally makes it to the Smithsonian Institution. There, he is greeted by two receptionists who don't believe him to be T.S. Spivet, the winner of the prestigious award. Nonetheless, they summon Miss Gibson, the director of the institution. Sometime later, she arrives and gets shocked to see a little boy claiming to be the famed scientist. However, the genius lad proves her wrong by describing his invention from scratch. He also talks about his various other scientific modules that he is currently working on. Amazed by his vision and speaking ability, Miss Gibson finally believes that he is the real T.S. Spivet. As the two get lost in their conversation, T.S. once again lies that he is an orphan. Miss Gibson, who only cares about his talent, immediately buys it. Later, she takes him to a hospital and gets him checked. Miss Gibson also insists on being his new guardian, assuring that she will take care of all his needs. But in reality, she simply wants to bask in his spotlight. T.S is too naive to understand this, so he agrees. He then asks her to accompany him to the conference, where he will be given the prestigious Baird Award for his invention. In the next few days, Miss Gibson does take good care of T.S., but she also starts becoming possessive. One day, she even has his brain examined to see what's really inside this young lad's head. Once the results are out, the doctor reveals that the boy's brain functions very normally. In fact, he is no different than other children. However, this only offends Miss Gibson, and she scolds the doctor, calling her unqualified. Following this, we are taken to the awards ceremony, where Miss Gibson has T.S. on her toes. She dresses him up and instructs him to act and behave in certain ways that are favorable for her job. Basically, the director is only trying to gain the limelight for herself. T.S. sits at a table alone during the conference, while Miss Gibson talks to other attendants about how she has been taking care of him ever since he became an orphan. The guests are equally enthralled and excited to meet a 10-year-old boy who made such a breakthrough invention in science. Suddenly, the little boy is swarmed by a crowd of admirers. They begin to congratulate him with big, cheerful smiles. But T.S. knows better. He thinks that these guests are just faking it because he knows the exact mathematical calculation that makes up a real, happy smile. In the next scene, the organizer of the show congratulates the young lad for his discovery and calls him over to the stage. T.S. slowly makes it to the podium but remains silent for a while. He then nervously introduces his background and extends his gratitude to the attendees who are present there to see him. Once he gets the hang of it, T.S. becomes more confident, and he ends up talking about his dead brother. He finally reveals how his brother died because of his mistake. It turns out that on that fateful day, the two brothers were experimenting with a gun inside the barn. T.S., being a science geek, wanted to test the velocity of a bullet, while Leighton simply wanted to shoot. They agreed to help each other out, but at the last second, the gun jammed. T.S. tried to check it, and without pulling the trigger, he ended up shooting his brother, killing him instantly. After concluding the story, T.S. sobbingly admits that nobody ever talks about 
about Leighton anymore, as if he never even existed. Even the audience is brought to tears by the sad story. Surprisingly, unbeknownst to T.S., his mother is also present in the audience, having driven to Washington to find him. Later, the boy is prepared to appear in a sensationalist talk show. Miss Gibson, who acts as his representative, sits behind in a guest room and watches the interview. Back in the live show, the host initially inquires T.S. about how his invention came to be. The latter tries to give some scientific background, but he is always cut short by the host, who is only interested in keeping the show going. The host then begins to slowly divert the topic to T.S.'s brother, since it will give the show a lot of TRP. However, Miss Gibson was aware of this, so she had already advised T.S. to not delve into the emotional topic. The young boy does as he is instructed. Suddenly, T.S.'s mother interrupts the interview and shocks everyone. In particular, Miss Gibson is enraged, as she now can't be in charge of the boy anymore. The mother tearfully apologizes to T.S., saying she should have been more present for him. She also tells him that Leighton's death wasn't his fault. And hearing this, the little boy finally gets some closure. He then hugs his mother happily, and the two leave the interview. However, backstage, a drunk Miss Gibson starts hurling obscenities at the little boy. This infuriates his mother, so she punches the selfish woman and calls her out for taking advantage of her young son. Hell yeah! While all of this is happening, the show host continues to go live with his set members. He insists the mother and son give a little time and continue the interview from earlier. Unfortunately for him, T.S.'s cowboy father arrives on the scene and knocks him out with a solid punch. After this, the family happily returns home. In the final scene, in a monologue, T.S. reveals that his mother just gave birth to a new baby. The young genius puts his skills to the test and invites an even better perpetual motion machine than the last one. This machine is now used to rock his new infant sibling's cradle on the front porch. As the movie ends, T.S.'s sister Gracie is preparing herself for the upcoming Miss Montana contest. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.